fly shop today. We're going to tie a mud buddy. It's a smaller crawdad pattern that we've been working with for a while now. Um, it's tied on a size 4 Mustad 3906 hook. Um, it's a much smaller hook than most of your crawdads are tied on. It's not a real long hook. It's better suited for carp, panfish, crappie, um, even trout. I, I think it'd be a great pattern down at Bennett sometimes. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take some black thread and just lay it in right behind the eye of the hook. Give it about 15 wraps here, 15, 20, something to that effect. Pop your thread off. Then we're going to take a 530 seconds. Let's see if I can get that thread off me. Uh, dumbbell eye, brass dumbbell eye. We're going to put it in right there where we stopped our thread. I'm going to go back a little bit forward. We want this pretty close to the eye. It will run hook point up clouser style, but we want it real nice and close to that eye. Just like that. Give it about, whoops. Give it about three or four turns. Go the other way. Another three or four turns. Something just so you get it nice and straight and squared up. Like that and then go around the base of it four or five times fairly tight go right behind it and then normally what I'll do is actually at this point I'll go ahead and take this fly and I'll whip this off just like that behind those eyes remove my thread and then take a little bit of super glue zap a gap whatever this was the cheap stuff at the Walmart and I'll give it a good drop of super glue right there to lock that there so it'll never move again. And then I'll drop that out of my vise, but and I'll do a whole bunch of those at one time. I've already got one here handy, already glued up and ready to go, so we'll just jump in and get started on this one. <clears throat> go ahead and run our, once we've got that all done, we'll run our thread back all the way to the bend, and we're actually going to go a little bit beyond the bend on this one. Somewhere right in there looks good. We're going to take two strands of some flashaboo. This is just kind of a steel gray pearl color I've got. I, you're going to use it for antennas, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what color it is. It can be just plain pearl. We're going to lay the whole strands going back across the hook right on top of the shank. They're not cooperating here. Put them right there. We'll lash that down two or three turns then we'll take the excess here and we'll actually pull it back again on top of the hook shank and lash it down take our scissors and we'll pop them all off somewhere about that long nothing real scientific here just about yay long about yay much I don't get too much into the particulars on this kind of stuff so there's our antennas tied in. We're going to take a little bit of this dubbing. I'm using some sow scud. Um, it's a uh, dead orange color. It's real close to the color I normally use for an orange colored crawdad, which seems to be a really, really good color for carp for me. Take a tiny little bit here, just a teeny tiny little bit of dubbing. Rub that onto our hook, or onto our thread. And we're going to build a ball for our claws to go around. Get a nice little, there you go, beautiful little ball laid in there. Now we're going to take a piece of a pine squirrel zonker strip, and we're going to cut two little claw length pieces. And if you look, they're just about the length of the hook shank-ish, maybe a little shorter. That's a good length there. Give it a little bit of movement out there to those claws. And we're going to lay them in on either side of the hook shank. Right behind that ball of dubbing there. Just like that. Give it a couple turns just to hold it in place. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll try and do this so y'all can see it. Put my finger in the way. How's that? You're gonna have to. There you go. Something like that. I'll slide it up a little bit. There you go. Just like that. Slide it back around where it belongs. Tighten it up. And then we're just gonna smooth that all out. Build up all this bulk. We're not worried about bulk here because we are tying a crawdad pattern, so bulk is not really that important. So there's a little bit of bulk there. 
Now we'll take a little bit of a little piece of a hackle, a little uh, hen saddle like this. This is kind of an orange brown color. We'll take this and I'll strip off this side and leave just this side so my feather looks like that when I'm all done. I'll tie this in by the tip right here. Go ahead and tie it back down till I'm right there by where I tied my claws in. Got a couple of pieces that jumped there on me. Nip them out. Now we're going to go back to dubbing. A little bit more of this orange dubbing here. We're going to build the thorax area of this. We need a little bit of bulk here, but not too much. Still keep your dubbing a little sparse on the thread, but you can build some bulk now. Spin it on nice and tight. Wrap it down there. Gonna need just a touch more. There we go. That's starting to look good now. That's good right there. And normally what I do is I stop that thorax right about even with the hook point because I think that just looks real nice to me. Okay. Then we're going to take this hen saddle and we're going to palmer. We're going to try and palmer up everything we got on this hen saddle. This one's nice and long. I like them to be pretty long. It gives you a lot of those real short looking little legs there at the beginning of the, the fly right behind the claws. I think they look real nice that way. So we just palmer all this little saddle we can get onto the shank. And I left a little bit of the bottom of the plume on there. Tiny touch of that marabou, give it just a tiny little bit of life and still water. Tie this little piece down there. Pop it out of the way. Pull these guys forward just a hair and I wrap up onto them a tiny little bit like that. And go ahead and drop that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of wire. This is some UTC brown small. It's just what I had handy guys, but y'all can use brassy size, you can use medium, you can use small, you can use copper, you can use black, you can use any color you want. It's not important. The important part is get the wire. So put that in and we're going to tie that in right up to the point where we stop the thread right here. Again, right even with the point of that hook. And then I run my thread back here out of the way. It makes this part easier because I'm going to start dubbing a whole bunch to build this rear section of the body. Get some dubbing out. South Scud stuff's real nice to work with because it's nice and soft. It's got a little bit of length to it. It spins nicely onto the thread. And I start from the back and work my way to the front and then go back again. And then of course I'll brush it all out when we're done and over with. I actually got a pretty good looking body there. Pretty good start on it. I'm going to go ahead and put in another little sparse rope there. Get some length to it. If I get too much, that's okay. I can pull some off. I am going to pull a little bit of that off. So i got to go pretty pretty thin on it right there around those eyes. Because all I want to do is just color them. I don't want to build a bunch of bulk on them. So like you say, see how thin that is. And I'll just go around the eyes once like that. And go around them like that. And then I flip it over and look at it. Looks good, so I'll just go right there. Okay, now... Here's where it gets real easy or complicated, depending on what you want. This is a piece of leather or chamois strip or whatever you want to use, ultra suede, all that stuff. This is what I got. I cut it to a point. I pierce it onto the hook right about, I can get it laid here. I'm going to pierce it right about there onto the hook. First, I'm going to push this all these saddle feather, these fibers from this feather here to one side or the other depending on what side they kind of decide they want to go to. I'm going to go ahead and 
poke that onto the hook. Then I'll take this out of the vise for just a split second, poke it all the way around, put it right back into the vise. I'm going to take this, and again, i got to figure out where those little feather fibers want to go, all that hackle that we put in there. Then I'll pull a little bit of tension on this, and I kind of roll it towards my thread so it doesn't bunch up, and then I bring it down tight, right there at the eye of the hook. Bring it down nice and tight, just give it about three wraps. Okay, i got all that extra there, then I'll pull it back forward, and I'll go right there at the eye, just one good turn, just like that. Okay? Gosh darn it. Now I'm going to take this wire that we tied in and I'm going to go straight across the top of the hook like that one time, put some tension on it. Then I'm going to go at an angle, straight across the top of the hook, put some tension on it. Again an angle, put some tension on it, sinks it in, gives it that nice look. Then I'll go right here where we tied that down. I'll go one wrap around there, then pull this back forward again, back to the barb of the hook, and go one time around there. Then if you just kind of put a little, little bit of tension on it, it'll pop right off right there. And you can tie it down just like that, give it about three good turns, take your whip finisher, one, two, three, four, pull it off, cinch it, give it a clip. A little bitty dab of super glue to hold that all nice and tight. You want that little tail piece, so you clip it off like that. It gives you a nice little tail piece. Get you a little dubbing brush of some kind. This is basically a popsicle stick with Velcro on it. Works as a dubbing rake or dubbing brush. Brush out the bottom of this fly real good. Makes it look a little buggier. Gives it some extra legs and some extra movement in the water. All that lifelike stuff that we like. Just like that, so it looks all nice and buggy and pretty. Anything that's decided it wanted to go one way that you don't want it to go, you can move it now. And then there you go. That's it. Mud Buddy Crawdad. Real easy. Oh, there you go. How's that? Mud Buddy Crawdad. Pretty simple fly. Looks real good, very effective.